Yeah, it's getting rough now. Hey, uh, so I just went to do a little review on my kayak setups I have here. So this one here, I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet, um, is the um, Hobie Passport. It's a 10, 10 and a half foot. I had this for a few years now. And I like I like this thing. It's fast. I mean, it's easy to get around with. Um, it's not stable. It doesn't come really any any bells and whistles. But, you know, if you just want to get out in the water uh, for the price, you're really not going to beat it, really. I mean, compass might be the your best choice but it you know and i think you can switch these drives as it comes with the basic uh hobie drive is really dirty right now um we had it out a couple weeks ago or like actually last week um and we were hitting a lot of sandbars mud so what this comes with it comes with uh, an aluminum paddle your standard drive the aluminum paddle is not great but i mean for this it's not too bad because it's a light kayak um it comes with a basic seat which is fine I actually almost like it better than, than the Outback seat, which, which I'll get into. It comes with the manual rudder, which I don't like. Uh, two handles, one back and then one up here in the front. It comes with one storage compartment here. And I bought the, the bucket for this, so it's somewhere. Um, that's pretty much all it comes with. So what I did with it, um, I added the two mesh pockets, one on each side. One here. I have the fish finder with the sky, Scotty arm and mount. It's just a side arm. Oh. So you can lift it up when you're done. I don't know if you can see that. Just drop it down, lock it in. And it has a little Garmin uh, 4 Plus, I believe this is. Um, I like this fish finder. It's not, it just does the job. I mean, and, and it boots up right away. It's inst instantaneous, and I have it hooked up to a wilderness battery. I used to put in a dry bag. So there's really no way to, to set <clears throat> these up correct without throwing holes, honestly. So that will be something, you know, I probably will do. But usually I just put a little uh, bag on the, on the back of the seat and just kind of keep it suspended so it's not getting wet. Um, I also put a, the fish uh, rod, rod holder on here. It's just a um, yak attack, I believe it is. Uh, this is nice, you know. It's especially for this because it has no rod holders in the front. It has two rod holders in the back here, which I keep my one net. Um, some scuffer plugs or holes. It has a sail mast or bimini mast in the front, like all Hobies. Um, so it does come with that, which is good. And really, that's all I added for this thing. Um, and like I said, it's fine. I mean, it's it's pretty fast, which is which I like about it. If you just want to get around and cruise around. This is perfect, honestly, because you don't doesn't have no, no reverse drive or no kickoff fins, but it's fast. And you could actually switch out if you have, like I have too. I could actually throw in the other drive, I believe, in the here if I really want to move and go in reverse and things like that nature. Because I think it's the same cartridge uh, slot. So then I have the Outback out here. This is the 2020 Outback. Um... This is a little more rigged up, but it also comes rigged up for the most part. So this comes with the 180 drive with the kick-up fins and forward and reverse. It has the rudder control system on the cleat. If you want to drop the rudder, you just kind of pull it, release it. Also has the transducer um, release if you have side scan. That's the front hatch up here, which is where I keep the battery and everything. And here's also a tail and stuff like that. Um, and that's fine. You don't have to one hand it here. This also has a sail mast here or a bimini. It's kind of just closed, but it has that. Also, you go you can put a GoPro, you know, arm or whatever. It has two rod holders in the front um, and two in the back, each side here. Um, it comes with your troll mount, troll motor mount. If you want to add that on, the rudders underneath here. Um, it comes with a better seat, even though I'm not crazy about it. I mean, it's just almost almost, almost too difficult to, to work with. But, but it's definitely, it's nice. It comes with the two mesh pockets on each side. It also has this, this uh, these little tie-downs here. You can see that? Hold down your paint boxes and stuff like that. It also has like little leashes. 
you can leash some of your tools, which is nice. It comes with one center storage compartment. It also has like a, a bottle opener and a little mesh pocket where I use to put my wallet and keys and stuff like that. And this is a pretty big compartment. I can put a lot of stuff in here. And I always, you know, have fish finders, pliers, scissors, a knife. You know, I keep my, you know, holders, scale. Also, I keep a utility knife and tool set with it. Um, I bought the wheels, the big wheels, in case I want to drag it on the beach. I have just a standard milk crate uh, that has this, which is important. This protects your rudder when you're transporting your kayak. It's kind of snap it on right here, and that trains and that protects your rudder underneath here. Also, have a flag when I transport the crate. I just keep you know some plenty of boxes, suntan lotion, bug spray, some lures, stuff like that. Also, have a, a net, and I have the flag with a light. That's a must. In some states, it's, it's a law. I have a measuring board for fishing. Uh, it also has the rudder you can turn both ways. Um, all right, you can turn them both, using both sides as one on this side and one on the other side. Um, it has the better paddle. It's a lighter paddle. This is not an easy kayak to paddle, though. Um, I always keep a rain jacket with me. You should always have flares. Um, first aid kit and a bilge pump, which I actually lost. I got to get a new one. Uh, you know, the, the NRS boat shoes. And also a PFT is a must. You always should have a PFT. Um, I have some loose lures. I was just bass fishing, well, perch fishing mainly yesterday. So, this is my lure choice when I perch fish or like bluegill. I mean, it works for bass too, these little uh, crankbaits. I love them. Uh, it looks like a little, a little bluegill, I guess, or maybe a little, actually, it almost looks like a perch. It's not a crappy. I think it's a little bluegill or perch. Probably a little perch. I'm not a fresh water fisherman here. But that little micro jig finally caught a fish. Get him back in. Right, one. Uh, what is it? Big bluegill, I guess. It's a pretty big one. Jeez. This is gonna be fun getting him off. Alright, bud, hold on. I don't think it's a perch. Nope. Nope. Fish on? Uh, it's a little perch. Hi, right, bud. Right in the corner of the mouth. Um because everything goes after little baits like that. So the really, it also has the track systems, two in the back and two in the front, as you can see. Uh, it also has the little tie downs in the back here too. Um, like I said, it has the four rod holders all together. So, you, I mean, you're, you're ready to go at the box. Also, I put uh, the Lawrence uh, fish finder on here with the just split shot transducer. Uh, I don't have side scanning. I don't really need it, I don't think, for what kind of fishing I do typically. Um, like I said, this thing comes pretty much ready to go at the box. Whereas this one you need to do, you need to, you know, add some stuff to it. Um, things I like about the passport over to the Outback is the speed. The uh, transportability, like transport this thing is a lot easier. You can pick it up and carry it, then a ramp if you need to. Um, 
so I like that um, and this also this paste only has one steering handle here see the rudder it only has one on your left hand side which is fine I mean that's 99% of the time where I use it anyway um, the Outback um, things I like with the Outback obviously is stability I can stand all day and fish on that thing even in somewhat choppy water I, I mean I can stand I feel comfortable launching it I can stand you know if you're six inches of water I could Just kind of stand on it and just go with it um i like the the features obviously on it it's it's a fishing kayak it's not a pro angler but it's pretty much in between it's like the swiss army knife like as i say fishing kayaks and it, it, it is i mean it has everything you need um and i feel safer in it that's the biggest difference i feel safer more stable um i was flipping this kayak once you know it was kind of my fault but you know i lost the phone and some lures Things like I think I actually lost the bilge pump that day, uh, or the second time I lost it, the scale. I'm, I lost a few things, uh, but it was my fault. But this is faster, and also you could switch out the drives, I believe. You could switch out the drives, and I could put the 180 drive in this, this bad boy. You'll fly. I mean, with those the turbo fins, I mean, I can't imagine how fast you could, because I can't keep up with this now. And paddle this is easier. If you're going to paddle, you can just paddle this thing, you know, just keep all the other weight out of it. Off you want to go old school, just, you know, you don't need a fish finder. You don't need rod holders and nets. You just take the paddle out. And you, this is a 65-pound kayak. The Outback, you're not really doing that. I mean, it does paddle, but it, it, you're working. So that's about it. So I, the things about the Outback is more of a fishing kayak. So I do like that. And it's versatile. I could take it in the salt. I could take it in the lakes. Um, the wheels work pretty good for the most part. only thing, you know, sucks is sometimes getting the wheels out of the kayak when you're trying to launch it and that's a that's just a major issue with uh hobie in general or any pie kayak honestly especially a heavier one so that's about it um hope this helps and i guess one a couple of things i want to mention uh with, with this passport that i don't like is that's their cup holders just little things here are the cup holders so you're not really holding nothing with with that um compared to the outback has pretty awesome cup holders yeah i could put my yeti in here water bottle whatever so that's pretty good and also the other thing um that i like with this outback i didn't really mention was these little molded tool holders um here's an, another good example um if you have a knife the little slit here you kind of just drop your knife in there so you could have your like your this thing is ready to go it also has oh i should have showed this earlier it has the this little pull down if you want to keep your, your fins up and that's on both kayaks the passport has it also passport has it also so you can kind of hold your your fins back you know whatever tie them down if you want to keep your fins up if you're in shallow water without pulling the drive out um, so that's really about it. Uh, I just wanted to mention that. So you don't really have any cup holders with this passport either. I, I know it's, it's, it seems trivial, but if you're on the water all day, it does help to have some, especially if, you're, if you have a Yeti cup or, you know, whatever, that you want to keep your stuff cold. Um, so that's about it with these both, both these kayaks. Um, the Outback also, I think this is better because it has more storage. Uh, in general because uh, it has a front ha uh, center hatch and also the center hatch in the, in the middle which is good um, for running like you know your transducer cable from the back come to the center hatch and also the you can put your battery up in the front and whatever you can put other stuff too um, like a little cooler if you want to throw it in there which is which is important so this is better for just cruising Outback's better for fishing. I mean, that just goes without saying. I mean, I, I think anybody, you know, who's, if you know kayaks at all, you know that the Outback's a fishing kayak. That's what it's made for. It's a Swiss Army knife of kayaks. That's why they call it that. Um, like I said, otherwise, these are both capable kayaks. I mean, I would not, if you're just looking to get on the water, go with the passport i, I would i would definitely recommend it. and they have the 12 and a half foot one too 
which honestly, I don't know what the benefit of that is because it's still the same width. And they're both 34 inches across, I believe. Um, actually, I'm gonna, let's test that. Right here. So you've got 34. Let's see. That box looks wider than me, but yeah, they're about the same. So I mean, the length I don't I don't understand um, what the benefit is of the 12 and a half foot passport. Unless there ha unless has more storage and things like that. But not more storage. I don't I don't see the benefit. I would go with the 10 and a half because you're getting this kayak for cruising, getting around. You know. You're getting it for the ease of throwing a roof of your car. You know, what you could be a you know a smaller person, a girl, you know, a kid. You could drag this around a lot easier than you will the passport. I mean sorry, the outback. Um, but if you're a fisherman, uh pro angler or the outback the way to go. Or you know, maybe the old town or I heard that they're very good. I don't know if I like that pedal uh, compared to the push of the these drives. But the auto reverse is nice on the old town and the, the natives, which I was looking at the native. When I bought the Outback. It was on the fence. Uh, I just thought that, that I like this drive better, believe it or not. I just like to push. You know, I just I like pushing. I don't want. I don't really want to pedal. I think I would get more tired, especially if you're co trying to cover a lot of ground, and or in you know, rough seas, or, you know, rough water. I just think the push is better because usually you're you're going forward anyway. But the auto reverse is nice, so I would consider that too if you're looking at the kayak. The native they have a smaller one like this. It's like ten and a half, I think foot um, one. I forget what model it is, but it's very nice. I mean, it's fish it's fish ready. I mean, you, you don't have to do anything with that thing. Um, this is not fish ready. I mean, it, it, it's partially, but the stuff I had to get for it really were, were cheap. Like these mesh pockets, I think were like $25 each. So that's 50 bucks. I think this Jack Attack rod holder was like 30 bucks. You know, fish finder, obviously. You need that for any kayak though. Um, and the arm and all that for it uh, ended up costing, you know, a couple bucks, but it wasn't that bad. Um, so you really don't need to spend a lot of money to make this thing work for you. Um, Outback, you don't need to spend any money, technically, besides fish finder. It means pretty much ready to go. I haven't to do anything with this yet. Um, and I don't plan on really doing a whole lot with it. I don't think I'm gonna put a motor or anything like that. Um, I just wanna fish, you know? I want, I want, I want a kayak. Um, I also have ropes on both of my kayaks, though. And this is important. See that? And here's the last part of this. Um, here's some of the rods I like to take when I fish kayak fish. I like to, my cashing. CRT rod, it's a perfect kayak fishing rod. It's nice and light for casting all day. Um, I like my St. Croix uh, Tidewater. It's a seven, I think seven, six rod. Uh, has a pen fierce. I think two real. I think it's a four thousand. Uh, I have so many rods. I get confused sometimes. Yeah, it's a four thousand, which is nice. Also, I like this little uh, tsunami. I call it my seventeen seventy six rod. Um, I like this. It's only six foot, but it's it's good for like well, I troll with this with uh, bucktails, mainly in the salt water. It's a little heavier than actual the, the bigger rods. Uh, also, my pen battle too. I like that's the combo, and I also like the uh, a, a bait caster. I'm not real big on bait casters, but I like them when I bass fish. I definitely feel like I actually like jigging with them, believe it or not. Um, and I like lighter rods because they're it's you know, you when you're kayak fishing, you want to have you know, you're, especially if you're bass fishing, you're you're casting all day, and the lighter the rod, the better it's going to be easier it's going to be to control um so that's about it so uh i mean some of my rigs i like to do family fishing i like uh bucktails tubes with with like a with some flash for a striper um i have a bunch of plano boxes now i don't what i don't do when i uh kayak fish i don't bring a tackle box normally i'll bring it a little cooler uh for holding fish uh, which is out there, but I don't bring a tackle box because I put our, all the planos in at the crate or tie them down in the outback. Now, if I bring this, I'll just put as much stuff as I can in a, in a crate. 
Um, maybe I will bring a tackle box then, a small one. I have a small plain old one out there. Because um, you want the less stuff you have, the load up. I mean, <laughs> anybody who kayaks as you know, when you load up, unload, I mean, it's, it's a process. It could take you 15, 20 minutes sometimes, you know, getting into the ramp, you know, putting everything up, rigging everything, you know, make sure your rods are all good. You always forget stuff. I always, always forget stuff. Uh, you know, did you plug your battery in? Did you bring your battery? Um, your fish finder, your arms, your wheels, your nets, the, the lights with the, with the flags. So you always forget stuff. So the, the less you have, the better, honestly. Um, so I try not to bring a tackle box if, if, not, if I don't have to. Just keep it lean and mean and just get out in the water as soon as I can. Because the idea is to go fishing. If, it, if you're wasting, you know, half hour to an hour setting up everything before you even launch i mean you're kind of defeating the purpose so that's another good thing i like with this kayak you're just leaning mean you're going out you're going to fish i bring one or two rods with this thing um I, a small crate i have the rod holder in the front that's kind of i could and that's great for trolling too um i love that for trolling uh actually i'm going to get one for the outback i will get one for the outback because i do like to troll especially in the salt for flounder or you know things like that um that's about it though uh, hopefully this helps and like i said if you're in the market i would definitely look at this passport if you're looking for a first time kayak um if you're looking for an all all in one kayak i think the outback or pro angler obviously but pro angler is going to run you about five grand and and that's like 120 pounds like without anything on it so it's pretty heavy but it's beautiful that 360 drive is, looks pretty awesome so i would never tell nobody not to get that because you know, if I had the means and, you know, I would definitely consider it, honestly. Um, but I also think if I was going to get that, I would probably be a little John boat or something. But uh, so that, that's the thing, you know, the, the happy medium you got to find. That's why the Outback, I think, is the perfect one for if you're a major fisherman and you like to fish. All right. Hopefully that helps. Have a good one. Good tight lines.